Hey, Walter Sorrells here with an update on my new shop. So many of you guys probably know that I've recently moved to a new shop. I basically outgrew my old garage shop, you know, about 10 years ago, but uprooting yourself from your house, buying a new house, finding a new shop, finding a house and a shop, you know, on the same property, working out everything financially, you know, maybe pulling your kids out of school, you getting all those ducks in a row is not an easy thing to do. But my wife and I were finally able to make it happen. So today's video will show what I've been up to for the past month and a half. If any of you are thinking about building a new shop, moving, whatever, I'm not saying this is a cautionary tale. I'm just saying it's a lot of work that will take you away from making knives. Just something to think about. Now, in the interest of making this a non-endless video, I'll chop this in half and release two videos. So one of them will come out uh, in another couple of days. Anyway, the space I left was this. And here's where I ended up. Enormous upgrade in every respect. But I gotta say, I completely under misguesstimated how long it would take to get things up and running. So in the last video, I left off here. At this point, I basically had everything in the new place, but all my stuff was in bins, a lot of the tools didn't have power, or weren't set up at all, and well, until you've done this, you just have no clue how many tiny details have to be sorted out before you can just fire up a tool, grab a piece of stock, and start making a knife. So today I'll break down a bunch of the challenges that I've faced before I can start getting knives out the front door again. First things first, I painted. I have two rooms that are separate from the main space. They were kind of dim and I wanted them to be reasonably bright so it was easier to light for video than my old shop. Of course, essentially half my business is making videos. So the easier it is for me to shoot videos, the more efficiently I can work. Now the painting obviously had to be completed before I could start installing furniture, machines, and all that sort of thing. Took about four coats in this room thanks to the fashionable purple tones that had been in here before and two coats in this room which is going to be my sort of dust and dirt room by the time i was done the painting ate up i don't know about three days of my life by the way if you're interested in how much it costs doing all this stuff i'll talk about the financial side of this move in a separate video but the bottom line here is that in order to keep from bankrupting myself I had to do most of the work myself. More time, of course, means no knife making. Anyway, painting finished, time to take on the electrical work. This was a big job. Now fortunately the shop here has a 200 amp single phase 220 panel. Pretty standard setup for this kind of thing. I mean 400 amps would have been nice, 3 phase would have been awesome, but this will do. Also, the original owner had used this place to work on RVs, so there were a bunch of 220 RV hookups and a fair number of 120 outlets. So I wasn't starting from scratch, but none of the 220 power was where I needed it, so a good deal of rerouting had to be done just to get my 220 machines functioning. There was also a fair amount of pretty janky homemade style wiring. 10 gauge wire running into 20 amp breakers, just extremely uncool stuff like that. So a certain amount of that had to be just kind of debugged. I probably spent at least a week on the wiring here. And honestly, I'm still not really done. In a perfect world, you'd run conduit everywhere and it'd be really slick and industrial, but the cow's already out of the barn on that one with most of the wiring being Romex. So I'm not going to tear it all out and start over again. That would be an endless amount of work and a lot of money. Moving on, I ran a new 20 amp circuit for each grinder, rerouted an existing 30 amp 220 line for my press, and put in a new 220 20 amp line for my lathe. It'll have to do double duty temporarily for my heat treating oven. There's going to be a fair amount of that for a while till I get everything fully wired. I was an electrician many, many moons ago, so I was able to save a good deal of money here. 
but I can probably spend a month just fiddling around with the electricity if I don't draw the line somewhere and just start turning machines on and making knives. I also started adding overhead lights. These are insanely cheap, crummy LED lamps from Walmart. Previously, this place was very dim. It had lights, but they're indoor-outdoor halogen lights. And first, they were kind of dim, but in addition to that, they throw off insane amounts of heat. Super fun in the Georgia summer. So they got to go eventually. The idea here is not only to improve the working light, but to give me just a kind of blanket of really even predictable coverage for filming. Not to get too much into the weeds about video, but it really helps to have even lighting as you're moving from place to place when you're filming. In my previous location, I spent just ridiculous amounts of time dragging lights around to make videos because the overhead lights didn't adequately light things for shooting video. Giant pain in the neck. So I'll be putting up more LEDs later and hopefully I'll never drag another light stand again in my life. I also put some of these insanely bright El Cheapo LED garage lights out in my dust and grime room. Same idea in mind, just trying to get nice even bright light. Also in that vein, I hung lights for filming product and stand-ups in sort of my office room. Wired to the drop ceiling. Very professional. Now ideally I'll improve this eventually, but once again there's a trade-off here between getting things going and getting them perfect. This is the sort of temporary improvisation that I find tends to end up still sitting there years later, but hey, it is what it is. This process also includes hanging a piece of conduit from the ceiling so I can hang a roll of paper that I use as a photographic background, you know, putting tape on the ground to mark where I'll put my tripod so I can consistently just set things up and not have to think too much about it, putting up light stands, taking some test shots to make sure everything was going to be framed right, all told a good solid day or two down the tubes getting this all figured out. My son Jake made a Tactics Armory sign for me, and we hung that together. This was kind of an emotional moment for me because Jake actually came up with the name for my Tactics Armory line of knives back when he was, I don't know, 11, 12 years old, something like that. He's now a grown-ass man with a college degree and a job, so this was really a full circle kind of thing. And honestly, just from a business standpoint, I'm still trying to sort out exactly how Tactics Armory fits into my product mix. But it'll be a lot easier to sort that out here where I have the space to bring in guys to help me out if I want to. I did that in the garage before and it was really kind of a disaster. Just not enough room in there. So let me turn to one of the coolest things about the new place. For years I've wanted to establish a grinder room, a dust room, dirty room, whatever you want to call it, that's separate from the rest of the shop. Now I can do that. What I mean by that is that I've taken all my grinding equipment and other nasty metal and abrasive dust producing machines and put them all in one separate room. In my old shop, and most guys have to do it this way, all your knife making gears in one room and huge amounts of grinding dust just ends up coating all your gear, your stock, your shelves. Yeah, it's messy, but it's also bad for your health. Look, if you're a hobbyist who spends, you know, a few hours in the shop every month, not a huge deal. But breathing this crap in day in and day out, it's actually really bad for you. Not only that, but it means that anytime you're doing assembling, painting, coating, anything where you want your work to be done in reasonably clean circumstances, you're just contending with dust and grime everywhere. So this gives me a chance to kind of think it through and be smart about it. So now I can just wall it all off in one room. The Bader and the Ameribrade are over here. The Buffer and the Bench Grinder are over here. Abrasive Chop Saw, Blaster, Surface Grinder over here. I brought in a room air filter from the old shop. Hung that. All of this required running some more power. And one of the big things here is I hung a curtain wall, so that way I can go in and out real easily without having to open doors all the time. I can keep the dirty air in, but not really limit traffic back and forth. Also, I'll be phasing in a dust collection system for the grinders, which are the worst offenders when it comes to dust creation. 
I was never really happy with the dust collection set up in my old shop, so I'm going to experiment a little until I come up with something I'm happy with. It's actually a pretty challenging problem for reasons I won't get into here, but if you make knives, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, if you're interested in that ongoing effort, I'll put a link to a video about that in the cards and description. I'm going to try a few different things over the next few months and see what sticks. I really want to get this right. Alright, I'm going to wrap up the first half of the video here. In the second half, I'll talk about organization and actually getting the machinery running. Look for that video in a couple days. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com